Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to set up a NAS, a network attached storage solution using a Raspberry Pi 4 and the software Open Media Vault. So if you're up for some Pi based file sharing, let's go and get started. To build our Raspberry Pi 4 NAS, we're clearly going to need a Raspberry Pi 4. And here I've got a 4GB model Raspberry Pi 4 because it's the one I happen to own, but you could use the 1GB version or the 2GB version to build a NAS. And indeed, if I was personally buying a Raspberry Pi 4 to use in a low cost NAS project, I would uh, buy the, the 1GB, the $35 version. In addition to the Raspberry Pi 4, we're going to need a power supply. Here's the official Raspberry Pi 4 power supply, USB-C power supply. And we're also going to need a micro SD card. I've got one down here to put our Open Media Vault software onto. And this is a SanDisk Ultra card, the type of card I always use with SBCs. This is a 16 gigabyte card. You don't need a card that big. Uh, it could be eight gigabytes. I'm sure that would work perfectly well. But it is worth pointing out, if you're going to be using a NAS long term, your software is going to be running off the uh, micro SD card, so it's worth getting a decent quality card. Finally here, we've got a, an Ethernet lead. As you can see, we're going to be using a wired connection to connect the Raspberry Pi 4 to the network. You can use the Open Media Vault software with a wireless connection, but it isn't advised. And certainly for setup, we need a, a wired connection. So these parts here give us the network attached part of this project. So let's now turn to storage. And when using Open Media Vault, we have to have a separate drive to our micro SD card connected to use at our network file store. And that can be any form of USB connectable storage device we can connect to our Raspberry Pi 4. So it could just be something as simple as a USB drive. This is a USB 3 a Gorilla drive. We could just connect this to our Raspberry Pi 4 into a USB 3 port and uh, use that as our file storage. And that might be perfectly sufficient if you want to build a small NAS, share a few files, or if you just want to build a NAS to learn about NAS configuration. This said, I think most people will probably use one of these, which is a SATA to USB 3 adapter. This connects into our uh, Pi 4, something like uh, that, and would allow us to connect in like uh, this, uh, say this uh, SSD. And uh, in this test, I'm going to be using this SSD as our uh, network file store. And I could be using instead a, a two and a half inch hard drive. This is a two and a half inch hard drive. And I have tested this drive on a Raspberry Pi 4 using this adapter to see if it works okay, it can be powered okay, and it can. And that's good news because this is a Western Digital Black two and a half inch hard drive, which means it spins a bit faster than some other two and a half inch drives, uses more power. And so if this runs fine with a Raspberry Pi 4, which it does, it means you should be able to connect any form of a two and a half inch hard drive to a Raspberry Pi 4 using its official power supply and adapts like this, and it should work absolutely fine. But the reason I'm going to be using the SSD in this test is because I've tried connecting these drives to a Raspberry Pi 4 and just testing the speed locally. And we can do about 83, 84 megabytes a second from the hard drive and about 280 from the SSD. And I am going to be running a speed test in this video. I don't want that to be constrained by the speed of the drive. We won't get anything like 280 megabytes a second from our NAS because of the constraint of gigabit ethernet, but I thought we should give it the, the best shot possible. It's worth pointing out you could connect multiple drives to a Raspberry Pi 4 to build a NAS. There's lots of ports here you could use, and you could use a three and a half inch hard drive in a NAS, but you'd have to find a way of powering it. You can't power more than a two and a half inch drive from a Raspberry Pi 4. So these are all our parts. Let's now get them all put together. And by the magic of filmmaking, here we are, everything has been connected up and also fastened down to a couple of pieces of plastic card to make our nice test rig. And I've also added on a fan, a fan shim from Pi Moroni onto the Pi 4 to keep it cool. You'd probably get away without a heat sink or a fan building a NAS with a Raspberry Pi 4, but as I got this available, I thought I'd add it in. And I point out here, we don't have to add on a keyboard or a mouse or a monitor because the interface for Open Media Vault is web-based, as you'll see in a second. And uh, talking of Open Media Vault, I think it's now high time we went in search of that software so we can write it to our micro SD card. So here we are on the Open Media Vault website at openmediavault.org. 
And if we go to uh, download, obviously we can download files. If we just skip on past the uh, advert there, we want an installation image, so we'll click on the, those there. And that will take us through to uh, SourceForge, yes it does. And if we go down here, you'll see we've got Raspberry Pi images, so we'll click on that. And if we go down here, you'll see that Open Media Vault 4, which is the latest version at the time of making this video in what, September 2019, is available for the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 3 Plus and 4. So that image will work for us, so I'll click on that. And uh, hopefully it'll come up in a second. It will do a little timer thing as a SourceForge does. And uh, there we are, so let's save our file. And uh, there we are, our file has downloaded and we now need to write it to our micro SD card. And to do that, we're going to go use a program called Belena Etcher, which you can download from this website here, belena.io forward slash etcher. I've already done that, so uh, the program is sitting waiting for us here in Windows, so I'll run it up. And uh, there we are. We'll select our image, which is the one we've just downloaded, and uh, there we are. And you'll see it's picked up the uh, SD card I've got plugged in, uh, which is our uh, SanDisk uh, card there. We could change it, but that's the one we've plugged in. If it's confusing you, it's saying Lexar here. It's a Lexar reader into which the SanDisk card is plugged. So all we've got to do now is click on the flash, and that'll take a second. Oh, yes, do we want to do it? Yes, we do. I must get rid of all those uh, annoying messages in Windows. Anyway, this will now write the image to the SD card. It'll take a second, so we'll speed on through. And there we are, it's finished. And whatever you do, do not now reformat the disk. Just click on cancel there. Windows doesn't understand the micro SD card now it's plugged into it, but that doesn't matter. So what we need to do now is to remove our SD card from this Windows machine and to put it into the Raspberry Pi, and then we can boot it up. And there we are, it is now doing its thing, setting up Open Media Vault. And the most important thing to say about this now is you have to be patient. It can take up to about 20 minutes for Open Media Vault to set itself up to sort everything out on our Raspberry Pi. And I think one of the most common problems people have with Open Media Vault is they start off this process, they think nothing has happened, they close down the Pi, they corrupt the card, and they get into a real mess. So you've got to be patient. Try making a cup of tea or even go for a walk in the park and talk to a couple of ducks. But whatever you do, let Open Media Vault get on with what it's doing. Wait until there's no flickering of the green LED. You'll end up with just the red LED on solid, that's the power LED, but no activity from the drive LED. And once you're in that position, it's time to access and configure Open Media Vault. Right, we're now going to access Open Media Vault using its web interface. And to do that, we need to enter its local IP address, its local internet protocol address, into the address bar in our browser. But what is that address? Well, there's various ways we could find it, and probably the easiest is to use a free piece of software, such as Advanced IP Scanner, which we can download from advancedipscanner.com. There we are, it's down there. Or we could use a program I use a lot, Angry IP Scanner, which you can get from angryip.org. And one of the reasons I like this, if you click on download here, you can download a legacy file, which is simply ipscan.exe. You don't have to install anything, and that'll work in any version of Windows. But regardless of which program you use, you've clearly got to use it, as it were. So let's uh, run up, first of all, Advanced IP Scanner to show you that, and uh, there it is. And we'll click on Scan. And what this is doing is scanning between different IP addresses on the network. As a default, it's scanning between 192.168.11 and 192.168.1254. And uh, that will hopefully find the things on our network. And uh, there we are, it's just flicked up, it's found the Raspberry Pi, which is on 192.168.17. So let's uh, stop that scan, and just to prove it can be done other ways, I happen to like this one, as I've said. In Angular IP Scanner, you've got to tell it where to scan from. So I'll use 192.168.10 to maybe 192.168.1, say 20. And again, uh, it should find the Raspberry Pi, hopefully. Has it come up? Oh, it's, it's come up. It hasn't actually given us the host name. Sometimes you don't get the host name in the, uh, all of these packages. And uh, 
from Open Media Vault, but certainly we could see it sitting there on 192.168.17. So let's go to the uh, internet again, go back to the web and enter that address, 192.168.17. It anticipated me, I've been here before, of course, and uh, we'll just open that up due to my scaling and we'll log in using the admin account for which the default password is Open Media Vault, if I can spell it correctly whilst talking to you. Looks like I can because we've got in and uh, you might want to go here to general settings and change your uh, password for the web administrator to something other than Open Media Vault. And I think we'll just have a look to see if everything is working okay if we go down to system information and uh, clearly everything is down there. And Open Media Vault is a very sophisticated system. As you can probably see down here, you've got lots and lots of options and things to set and play with. And people can find that, I think, a bit daunting. It was once said to me years ago that networking is the last black art of computing. And there's still a certain truth to that. So what I'm going to do in my next section is to show you how to set up the most straightforward, the most simple file share using Open Media Vault. Right, what we're now going to do is to set up a public shared folder on our Raspberry Pi NAS, which can be seen by everybody who's got access to this network. And to do this, the first thing we need to do is to go down to storage, and you'll see under disks here, which also means uh, SSDs, that there are two disks on this system. One is the uh, micro SD card, which is used by Open Media Vault to store its own software, and the other is the SSD we've got connected to the Pi. And you'll see if we select that, we can actually do things with it. We could wipe it if we needed to. We won't do that. We can click on edit, change things about the drive. If it was a hard drive, we could change it to spin down time, things like that. But uh, for now, everything there is fine. But the drive, the SSD, isn't actually mounted. So we need to go down to file systems, where you'll see in a second as they come up, there they are, that there's two partitions already mounted from the micro SD card, which Open Media Vault is using, but the SanDisk SSD is not mounted. So we need to select it and surprise, surprise, click on mount. And uh, that'll take a little second, a little message will come up. Do we want to do this? Yes. You'll see these messages a lot in Open Media Vault. Very important to wait for them, make sure they happen. And there we are, our SanDisk SSD is now mounted. So, the next thing we need to do is to go down to Access Rights Management. And here we could set up users and give them passwords and different privileges for different folders we've shared. But I'm going to go straight to Shared Folders. And I'm going to go on Add to create a shared folder. We'll call it, for example, Pi Stuff, stuff we've got on the Pi. And it's going to be on the SanDisk SSD. And the permissions here we're going to give it are going to be a Everybody can read and write, totally wide access to this. So I'm going to click on a save there. And again, in a second, we'll have a thing to say yes, and we'll apply that. And now the final thing we need to do is to go down to services. And here we're going to use what's called a SMB CIFS, which stands for Server Message Block Protocol Common Internet File System. It's basically the means of sharing files across networks most commonly used in Windows, as indicated by the little Windows symbol over there. So if we click on that, uh, we can go to, first of all, Enable. Do make sure you remember to enable or the whole thing won't work, and make sure you click on the Save. And uh, the second we'll see our message. There it is, and we'll apply and yes. And then with that done, we can go to Shares, and we're going to add a share. And the shared folder is going to be the one we've created, Pi Stuff. And uh, this is going to be public uh, on only guests. And only guests means there will be no password or username required to access this folder. And again, we can click on Save, and uh, it'll come up with its confirmatory message. Apply that, and yes. And once this is completed, in theory, we have set up a shareable folder on our network using Open Media Vault. So the next thing we should do is to see if that's actually working. So I'm going to uh, close that down like that. And as we're here in Windows 10, I'll show you how to access a shared folder in Windows 10. And the first thing to do here is to go to uh, Settings and to go to a Network and Internet. And then we need to go down here a little bit and to uh, Network and Sharing Center, there it is. And then to Advanced 
uh, sharing settings and you want to make sure network discovery is turned on. If that's not on, you need to turn it on or this won't work. So I just thought I'd show you that to be uh, safe. And then we'll go to this PC. If I can click properly, there we are. And uh, we'll go to a computer and we'll uh, map network drive over there. And uh, we now need to uh, browse, it's probably easiest. Hopefully it'll find it. There it is, look, it's calling it Raspberry Pi there. And there we are. We click on that. And there we are, there's Pi stuff. And we can go OK and finish. And then hopefully, if I give us a bit more space here, there we are, Pi stuff is now being listed as a network drive on this system. And if I uh, open it up, there it is. Obviously it's empty because there's nothing in it. I think I've got a folder down here with other things in. Where's a, there's a folder there with some things in. And we could take those files and obviously copy. If I can get to copy like that. And we could place them onto our new network file store. So there we are. We've managed to create a shared folder on our Pi using Open Media Vault and to access it from another computer. Right, as you might have noticed at the end of the last segment, the file transfer speed onto our NAS didn't seem very fast. And I did promise we'd do a speed test of the NAS drive we created. There it is, look. So we'll do that now because a crystal disk mark has magically appeared on this system. For some reason it wasn't there, I hadn't got it here. And we've got the Z drive actually selected, which is our shared drive on the, the drive on the Pi, the SSD. And we're going to be copying about a half a, a gigabyte of data. And we'll just run the first test here in Crystal Disk Mark, which will just give us a test of copying that very large file. So let's just run that test and speed through it. And there we are, we've got our results. We've got a read speed of 115 megabytes a second. That's pretty much what you'd expect around the maximum you can get from a gigabit ethernet. But we've got a write speed of only 49.37 megabytes a second, which is massively less than the speed of the SSD connected to the system. Not quite sure why that's so low, but uh, it's always good to have something to discuss in the comments on this channel. With its gigabit Ethernet and USB 3 ports, the Raspberry Pi 4 can form the basis of a good, low-cost, network-attached storage solution. And as we've seen in this video, setting things up using Open Media Vault is pretty straightforward. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hey.